got it. That hinge up a little bit. Too floppy. I guess that'll work out. I went back and forth some when I was thinking about how I was going to design the air intake for the boiler, the air, fresh air that feeds the fire. And after thinking about it and looking at different designs, this is what I came up with. This is just a, a hinged flap here that'll open and close this airway here. This is some rectangular tubing that I had that's four inches by two inch. And I fitted a piece of flat steel on a hinge and I can just open and close that to control the draft. Now this rectangular tubing is bigger than I need for the flow. So what I did, I reduced it down in the back to five square inches. A flow area because that's all I'm really going to need. I probably won't even need that much. Five square inches of flow area is what I use on my masonry heater in the house and that can go up to 10 square inches but the five square inches of flow area for the fresh air is where it works the best and I really didn't need any more for that because this is a smaller system than my masonry heater. I didn't want anything that had just an open area that just went straight out into the room. You know, I didn't want sparks or anything flying out when the fire is burning. So I wanted to have the air drawn probably from the top or the bottom. And I decided to just go from the top so the air will draw into the top and then into the fire that way. And if I do want to look inside the fire, I can open this all the way up and I'll be able to see what's going on in the fire. And then I can just adjust it and close it. This is just a cabinet hinge that I screwed onto there. So I think that'll work pretty decent. And this door just fits into this uh, framework that came with it. But I'm going to need some more framework on the barrel that this can bolt into. And that'll be the next thing that I build. I'll make a steel frame and weld that onto the tank 
after I cut it in and then I'll bolt this onto that steel framework. I'll probably need another some type of handle on here too, something I'm not going to burn my fingers on. And I'll probably even insulate the inside of this door, probably put like a half inch uh, ceramic fiber board on the inside. That's why I left that up a little bit. So I can fit some ceramic fiber insulation board over this because I don't need the heat you know, going right through the door. And that'll keep the burn chamber hotter too. So the next thing I'm going to do now is weld up a frame that'll weld onto the tank that I can bolt this door to. Clean that up a little bit. This lawn roller tank has a fill hole on this end of the tank, so I'm going to use this end here for the bottom. I'll hack this off. Then that frame that I just welded up will go into here, so this will be the bottom. And I'll just I'll cut into this tank and put that frame on there. I'll get this frame cut into here and put on there about like that. The next part of this boiler build will be to strip this paint off the tank here. I don't know what kind of paint is on here, but I want to take this off and put some high temperature stuff on it. So I'll have to sand it or grind it or something to get it off. And then I can start cutting into this tank. I can cut that opening for the door frame and get that door on there. And I'll cut the top off too, and I'll weld a little sleeve around the inside of it. So then that top will go right back on so I can take it off and on. My, I haven't had a whole lot of time this past week to work on that. We've been dealing with blizzards and blowing snow and cold temperatures and everything else. But I'll keep at it and keep posting. Thanks for watching.